friends we are back and this time we are going to see how do you go in for knowing the performance of a controller there has to be some performance criteria by which you can say whether the controller is working properly or not what is the kind of setting we should do so as to get the best results and before we go there is uh, as you can see the effect of disturbance on any particular process and left uncontrolled this is going to go to a new steady state is not going to come back to its set point so this is the response of an uncontrolled process or you can call it it is an uncontrolled response so what you do is you have number of options first of all you go in for a simple p control and the moment you go in for p control in that case the things are likely to settle down but as we know that proportional control is not able to remove the offset in most of the cases but for in purely capacitive systems it's not able to remove the offset so this offset will remain it means that it will never ever return to its original desired value in presence of the disturbance over there so what we do is that instead of going in for p you go in for pi that is along with proportional you go in for integral and that is able to return to the original point but it has large overshoots and undershoots and it can oscillate for long duration of time and it will continue to up to this point before it settles down so further it is improved by putting in the value of uh, derivative so you have p and i and d and the derivative the effect of derivative is that you can see the oscillations are now lesser and they quickly die down as they they come over here as quick as this over here but here again what should be the value of p what should be the value of i what should be the value of d so to say what should be the value of kc what should be the value of tau i what should be the value of tau d so that what we say it is a good response what is the definition of good what response is called to be good will also depend upon what is our requirement what is the requirement of our process so accordingly we are going to go in for some simple performance criteria of the controller uh, in in various cases as you will be seeing uh, we will go in for Uh, the simpler things first and slightly more complicated things later uh, complicated means sophisticated by the way so this is what we see is we have a controller we need to know its performance criteria so how do we get it that's what we are going to discuss in this video session so as we are going to go in for a simple performance criteria you can see that you have two different types of controllers the first controller is able to bring the process to desired level very quickly very quickly it 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 comes to the desired level here itself but then the issue with this controller is that it is going to result in some overshoot in some oscillations and it's going to take some time to settle down and the another controller the change the tuning of the controller or the type of the controller then in that case it is not going in for any oscillations it's not going in for any overshoots but it is very sluggish it takes this much time to first reach its original desired level of operation so this is very sluggish so obviously it depends upon the kind of process which you are going in for if the requirement is that you want a quick response you want to reach the desired level immediately and if it is little bit oscillating doesn't matter you can always you know tolerate these oscillations in that case you will go in for the response which is given by controller a on the other hand in case you are not very much tolerant to the oscillations uh, you are okay with the thing being sluggish in that case you will go in for the controller which is given by b so it it's clearly shown as you can read it out that 
if you want that the process should return to the desired level of operation as soon as possible in that case you will go in for the controller with tuning a or the type of the controller with a and in case you want to keep the maximum deviation as small as possible you don't want these kind of overshoots beating about the bush up and down up and down in that case you will go in for b but what if your requirement is that it should neither be sluggish like b nor be oscillatory like a in that case you cannot go in for either a or b you have to go in for some third type of controller or the same type but with different tuning different values of p i and d or different values of kc tau i and tau d as we call it mathematically so that's we have to have some performance criteria what do you mean by neither isolatory neither neither uh, oscillatory nor too sluggish what's the meaning of neither oscillatory nor too sluggish that's what we going for a simple performance criteria uh, as we say it's, it's a simple in the sense that you will be able to understand it in just uh, simple meaning of the english words as such so for every process control application you know we have two different type of criteria you have steady state performance criteria and you have dynamic response perf performance criteria when you talk of steady state performance criteria it primarily means offset nothing but offset this is the main thing we are mostly concerned about offset of course uh, you can have some other things but in terms of controller this suffices but as far as the dynamic response uh, performance criteria is there there are number of such parameters which are to be considered like for example you have overshoot you have rise time and you all know what is rise time rise time is the time needed for the response to reach the desired value for the first time and then you have settling time that it in settling time it settles down within plus minus 5% band it uh, reaches there and remains there thereafter we have decay ratio decay ratio you all know the ratio of second peak is to the first peak in the oscillation and then you have finally the frequency of oscillation of the transients and so on and so forth these are the various parameters or the various criteria you can say for the dynamic response and here the issue comes that sometimes when you want a quick rise time it may result in a very large settling time and in case you want to reduce the settling time then the rise time goes down and this is the conflicting requirement like you have to make a trade off you have to make a trade off you cannot go in for you cannot go in for both the things and you know that the overshoot and the decay ratio are anyway related to each other as we have been telling you again and again uh, so this is this is what we see is the uh the the set of uh, criteria you can say set of criterion or criteria for the dynamic response performance now as i said about the conflicting response there has to be a solution and what what designers of the uh, controllers they have worked over a number of years they have wrecked their brains they have uh, gone through various sets and trials for different methods and finally they have agreed upon one very simple criteria as i have been telling you it's a simple because as you will be able to understand it very quickly we know that by decreasing the value of overshoot through a decrease in the value of gain we increase the settling time right so this is the issue in case you want a lower overshoot in that case you will have more settling time in case you want lesser settling time you will have more overshoot this is a conflict as such that needs to be resolved so the criteria which the designers have finally come up with a simple criteria is that as per their experience they say that if you go in for decay ratio of 1 is to 4 that is the second peak should be 1/4 of the first peak uh, in in the oscillation so as you all have been knowing c upon a we have been calling it this is a reasonable trade off between a fast rise time and a reasonable settling time so this is called quarter decay this is called quarter decay it means that i have already been telling you the first peak is let us say 1 second peak will be 1 by 4 of the first third will be 1 by 4 of the second and therefore 1 by 16th of the first and fourth will be 1 by 64th which is as good as nothing so just in 
two or three oscillations things will settle down as such so this is what uh, we ultimately go in for so this is what we're going to analyze what do you mean by one quarter decay and how do you achieve this one quarter decay uh, we will see in case of a uh, first order system it's given a pi controller it becomes a second order in its uh, response and there it starts oscillation oscillating and we will be going in for this one uh, quarter decay method as you can see this you have to remember that this quarter decay means that the decay ratio decay ratio has to be 1 upon 4 so this is what we are going to see in the next few slides what we go in for again we have a servo control problem it's a first order problem with pi controller and as you have been doing always we are assuming for the sake of simplicity that the transfer function of measuring uh, element is unity the transfer function of final control element is also unity and so after putting in all the things the final response of the first order system when it's given uh, a kind of uh, uh, integral in that case it becomes a second order system tau i is the integral time constant which we have given and this is for the servo problem so we have to give a step change to this anyway plus ds term will be zero because uh, we don't consider any change on account of the loading factor because it's a servo problem it's not a regulatory problem so uh, in, in this case as we have taken I'll be just repeating these things i will not be deriving the things again and again uh, we know that the value of tau is given by root of tau i tau p kp kc kc is the gain of p tau i or you can say kc upon tau i is the gain of uh, the integral term tau p is the original time constant of the process and kp is the original sensitivity or you can say gain of the first order process so th these are the terms you are quite familiar with uh, so getting this term you will be coming to the value of tau that tau is what we have used over here or what we have used over here similarly we will find the value of zeta or the damping factor and you find that damping factor is given by 1 by 2 again tau i upon tau p kp kc 1 plus kp kc so you know what is kp you know what is tau p these are the parameters of the original uh, process first order process and kc upon tau i this again you know is what we gave it as a gain of the integral uh, which we had gone in for in pi i is for integral so as you see that we know the value of tau we know the value of zeta what we have to go in for is we need to know the value of decay ratio this is what the ultimate uh, you know target was that we go in for decay ratio and we put that decay ratio equal to 1 by 4 so that is what we are going to do as a simple performance criteria of a controller let us see how so we have a decay ratio which is given by this expression exponential minus 2 pi zeta upon 1 minus zeta square so what i will be doing is i will be putting the value of zeta and zeta square putting the value of zeta zeta from here and and you see it, this entire thing i will be putting equal to 1 by 4 so how to get the value of zeta uh, will be simply that if you take log of both the sides then this exponential log to the base e will be cancelled and we know the value of 1 upon 4 of log of e and therefrom you will get the value of zeta. I will put the value of zeta from here the, the terms of tau i kp uh, kc and uh, we will take some value of kp and some value of tp for example uh, these are the fixed and from there we will have a table between kc and tau i what should be kc what should be tau i what if kc is equal to 0.1 what should be the value of tau i what if kc is equal to 10 what if kc is equal to 100 or kc is equal to 1 what should be the corresponding value of tau i so as to maintain this decay ratio equal to 1 by 4 this is the criteria because this is a good I, we have said it's a good uh, trade off trade off means that a decay ratio of 1 by 4 means that we are getting reasonably good um, rise time overshoot at the expense of reasonably good setting time so this is what we are going to see in the subsequent slides as uh, you can see what i have done is put in the value of uh, zeta and zeta square in the value for decay ratio and the decay ratio we have taken as equal to 1 by 4 
as we had already discussed uh, in the previous slides and then what next I'm going to do is very obvious I will take the log of both the sides and solve for this equation and take the value of kp and tau p and we have taken the kp value of kp as 0.1 as an example value of tau p as equal to 10 as an example it can be anything depending upon the first order system which we are given we are left with only two unknowns that is kc and tau y and from this equation putting the value of kp and tau p from this equation we get that if kc is equal to 1 then tau y should be this much if kc is equal to 10 then tau y should be 0.4 if kc is equal to 30 then tau y should be 0.3 in any combination we take any combination we take every combination we have you know you can see one two three four five combinations we have taken and for all five combinations we see that the decay ratio will always be one by four now the question is what should be the value of kc what should be the value of kc this is something we, we have to take into account we choose the value of kc in such a manner that first we decide kc once we are satisfied with the value of kc then we will take the corresponding tau y which satisfies this equation so this is what uh, is to be discussed that we will be selecting the proportional gain first so that the controller has necessary strength to push the response back back this the strength is there to push the response back to the desired point and then once the value of kc is decided then we choose the corresponding tau i which leads to a quarter decay and that's we will say it's, it's a simple performance criteria and we will say the controller is now good enough it's a simple one anyway we have more more things to come in the next video sessions thereafter but so far as you can understand uh, with this example the quarter decay method is good enough uh, for most of the cases to start with we will go in for more criteria uh, in, in, in the next sessions later. In case you have any queries or doubts or you want to share something with me, you can always contact me through WhatsApp or Zoom or learning management systems or telephone calls or face to face interaction as the case may be. And I thank you for being with me. I wish you a very safe stay and enjoy learning. Bye bye.